Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today. We are now live. Over to you, Chidi. Thank you so much, Deepika. Thank you everybody for joining us today on this interactive session with Harriet Watt University, where we'll be learning more about the programs available. We'll be talking about facts, figures, ranking, and every other thing we should know about Harriet Watt and Scotland. Joining us today from Harriet Watt is um, Fiona, who will be telling us yeah, more about why we should study in Harriet Watt. Please, at the end of this um, session, you can We'll be answering some questions and you can drop them while the session is going on in the chat box so after fiona is done with the presentation we'll be answering every questions that are um, typed in the chat box thank you again for joining us and we hope that you have a great time and you learn more about harriet watt and at the end of the day school at harriet watt so i'll be handing over now to fiona uh, to take to take over thank you Thanks so much, Chidima, and hello, everyone. My name is Fiona, and I represent Heritwater University in um, yes. Nigeria and also Sub-Saharan Africa. I'm going to start very quickly with sharing my screen, but first of all, thank you for taking your time to come um, listen to why you should study at Heritwater University and the amazing benefits students will get from studying at Heritwater. So um, I'll be sharing my screen right now. So why this screen is coming up, okay, it's here now. So um, in this presentation, I'll talk to you about Herit Watt. I'll talk about our various locations and um, the interesting benefits of studying with us. I'll talk about courses, tuition discounts available, paying by installments. And of course, you have a lot of time to ask any questions you may want to ask about studying with us. Um, so Herit Watt University, first of all, is a UK university um, located in Scotland in the UK. So if you're looking at the screen right now, you see we have about three campuses in Scotland, and we also have a campus in Dubai and also in Malaysia. So one very interesting and nice thing about Herit Watt University is the fact that because we have this very lovely and um, various campuses across the globe, it means that many of our students, especially the um, international students, have the opportunity to transfer across campuses during their study time. And um, aside from transferring across campuses, while transferring, you also gain a lot of information and knowledge about the various countries you're going to, the continent you're going into, and how your course, your, your career, or your field works in those various environments. Another interesting thing is that, again, mostly beneficial to um, undergraduate and some postgraduate students, depending on their course, you may have the opportunity to complete a semester or more of your course at a different university or also complete an internship in a different country, which also helps to give you that global experience you need to actually have a global career. So I'm going to first of all talk to you about Edinburgh. So I'll be talking to you about our major um, locations and why it's interesting to study in those places. And for some of you who may choose to go through the intercampus transfer process, it gives you an idea of how you would benefit from these intercampus transfers when that happens. So Edinburgh actually is the fourth most beautiful city in the world. And um, for students who may choose to come study at our UK campus, um, most of you will be spending your time at the Edinburgh campus. I know I mentioned we have three campuses in Scotland. So for the other two campuses I mentioned earlier, they are for specialized courses. So students taking courses related to design, or architecture in the UK would be at the Scottish Border Campus. I'll just go back to that here. So we'll be at the Gauss Shells or Scottish Border Campus. And those taking courses like renewable energy development will be at the Orkney Campus. Otherwise, everyone going to UK will be at the Edinburgh Campus. So for Edinburgh here, you can see it's a very beautiful city. It's been voted as the fourth most beautiful city in the world. It's also a UNESCO protected city. So what that actually means is that it's, it has, it's a city that has some very old historical buildings um, and also very modern and new buildings. So UNESCO kind of protects this historical site, which also means it's a very attractive tourist destination and also the UK's festival city as well. 
So um, not only that, um, Edinburgh, if you're familiar with Edinburgh, is the capital of Scotland. Um, it's also the UK's second largest financial hub. And um, at the same time, it's also a very interesting site for students. We have about 39% of the population of people in Edinburgh are actually students. Not just that too, but um, this has been a site used for several very interesting movies. So if you've ever watched Fast and Furious or Outlander or The Avengers, just know that these movies were shot in Edinburgh. So it's a very, very lovely city for students to choose to come to. And of course, just some extra information again about Edinburgh. So it's the third safest city in the world, which is another nice thing about Herod Ward. So you have several of our campuses located in very, very safe cities like Edinburgh, Dubai. I'll talk about that later on. And of course, it's the second best city in the UK for students. Again, because um, Edinburgh is the UK's festival city and of course, a very beautiful place for tourism, it means we attract over 4.5 million visitors normally um, to Edinburgh, which means it's also easy, quite easy for students to get student jobs while studying in Edinburgh. It's something that many students benefit from. And you have students from other locations who are not studying in Edinburgh, trying to get apartments in Edinburgh so they could benefit from that opportunity to get student jobs in Edinburgh. And of course, Scotland is a very welcoming place. I would usually give an example with a student that I had um, who was just traveling out of Nigeria for the very first time and she chose to stay off campus. And her feedback about um, Scotland was like, oh, I felt very welcome from day one. So that's something students benefit from as well as the post-study work visa. So looking at our campus in Edinburgh, it's about just nine minutes away from the airport and um, about 27 minutes away from the city center. So quite an interesting place to stay. So we always have this bus that comes um, every hour to pick students up from the reception. So pretty much it's easy for you to get into the city center if you want to or enjoy the quiet atmosphere on campus. And of course, because it's a 300 acre campus, it's self-contained. So that means we have accommodation on campus, we have a Marriott Hotel on campus. So if you have relatives visiting, they can actually stay at the hotel on campus. And if you're someone who loves sport, then you will definitely love the sports yeah, performance I center. I just can I request for you to please mute your microphones, everyone, please? Thank you very much. Okay, so I was also saying that we also have the Scottish Sports Performance Center on campus. And um, it's also used by athletes and also Herod Watts students as well. And of course, there's a healthcare center on campus for students who may not um, feel well and a daycare center for those with kids as well on campus. So now straight up to a little overview of the Dubai campus for students who may choose to go study at the Dubai campus. So Dubai is, um, the, the UAE in general actually is the second safest country in the world according to the financial hub. And if you've ever been to Dubai, you would definitely understand that um, definitely it's a very safe place for students to study in. And this is because um, I've been to Dubai myself severally and it's a very calm place. I could be on the streets by 2 a.m. in the morning and I feel so safe and comfortable. It's a very multicultural city at the same time. And um, interestingly, it's, Dubai gives students um, the opportunity to actually benefit from the whole um, multicultural environment and opportunity to earn wider learn, which is very good for students, both postgraduate students and undergraduate students as well. So we have over 4,500 companies based in Dubai. And of course, with where we are located, we're very close to the internet city and the media city. And there are so many companies there like Cisco, Google. I'll talk more about that later on in the slides. And students who are over 15, who are studying, of course, who, are, who want to work in Dubai itself, have the opportunity to do that. They are allowed to work up to 15 to 20 hours a week. And um, so if you are going to start your studies in Dubai or you plan to um, complete part of your program in Dubai, you will also benefit from these interesting opportunities. So looking at Dubai again, of course, it's a very interesting and modern city. Um, mm -hmm. If you've had the time to look at the Dubai 2040 urban plan, you would also notice that um, the country is trying their best to become very much more innovative than they actually are. And um, they're trying to invest a lot in artificial intelligence, engineering, architecture. So students who um, are going to take courses like this, including business courses, because every um, sector needs people in the business environment. So students in these various fields would definitely benefit from these 
plans the UAE government has and would also provide you with lots of a litter of opportunities when you go to study in Dubai. Of course, right now, Dubai is a global hub for tourism, entertainment as well. And of course, there are several multinational companies who have their branches in Dubai, which makes it a very attractive place for international students. And at the same time, the living cost in the UAE is way cheaper than what you will find in UK or maybe the US and also um, some other top destinations. And of course, for postgraduate students, students who are postgrads have the opportunity to study part-time instead of full-time. Of course, you get a visa to study part-time only in Dubai, not in the UK. So um, if um, students are going to Dubai to study part-time, that means they, you'll be spreading your course across two years and only studying during the evenings and during the weekends. So what that actually means for you is that you have the whole day to actually look for a full-time job, which of course, if you get and your employer is willing to sponsor your visa, then in that case, you will be able to switch from a full to a full-time work visa while still studying part-time. So it gives you more opportunities if you choose to study part-time in Dubai. Then of course, for our campus again, in Dubai again, so, it's, it's located in a very strategic place at the Knowledge Park Village. Um, so this place is very close to the internet city, close to companies like Dell, Cisco, Google, and also close to very entertaining places like the Jumeira Beach, Marina Mall, and of course, JBR as well. So a very nice place for students to really choose to study because it's nice when you're able to really work hard and study and also be able to relax and enjoy yourself when you want to. And of course, there are various excellent facilities on campus as well. And of course, our final campus I'll be talking about is the Malaysia campus, which is our most affordable campus, also in located in Malaysia. Hi, can I ask again for everybody to mute their microphones, please? Thank you. So also, we also have the Malaysia campus for students who may think of completing part of their course in Malaysia. Then of course, for facilities on campus, Looking at the UK campus, also the Dubai campus and the Malaysia campus, there are several facilities. I would personally say, which is actually true, that for whatever course you want to study at Heritage, there's definitely most likely going to be facilities for, the, for that course. So even if you're a student going in for architecture or you're going in for engineering, you will definitely find some of the best facilities on campus because Heritage University is actually ranked third in the UK, for instance, for, on investment, for investment in facilities. And also in Dubai, we've spent millions of pounds as well, also creating several facilities for students as well. So we have some of the best facilities, like students taking artificial intelligence have access to the UK's National Robotarium on campus. And students taking several other courses also have access to numerous facilities, including the GRID, which is a very interesting facility for students who want to start up their own business. Um, they're able to get several ideas there and are able to show these ideas to several companies who partner with her at Watt University. So now looking again at um, reasons why you should pick her at Watt University, um, we are currently ranked among the top 270 universities in the world. And again, we've been producing very successful graduates for the past 200 years, which is very interesting because that also means we have produced several African graduates who have gone on to do so well in the industry. I could mention some of them both in Nigeria, like the current VP um, for Baker's Hughes, the VP for Global Alliance at Baker's Hughes was a graduate of Heritage University. Um, also the current um, CEO and MD for Stanbig IBTC Bank Uganda was also a graduate of Heritage. So, so many successful graduates of Heritage. And um, of course, we also ranked top 23 among universities in the UK, according to the Complete University Guide. I've talked about our inter-campus transfer opportunities. What I've not mentioned is the amazing student support students get on campus. Um, you will let her hear from the testimonials of some of my students, how they explain the support they get from their lecturers, which has actually helped them a lot um, during their study time at Heritage. And again, there's a career support team. So this is something we usually pride ourselves with, is the fact that we have an amazing career support team. They are there to, um, provide additional skills for students. So you have um, students learning how to prepare their CVs, how to um, prepare for interviews. And also the career support team is there to support students even with finding full-time jobs as well as part-time jobs up to two years after graduation. So very amazing um, support system there 
for students. And of course, we've had several successful graduates as well, which I mentioned earlier on. Then of course, for additional rankings, another key thing is that uh, we are first in Scotland for graduate salaries. So that means our graduates, most of our graduates end up earning a whole lot more within the first six months of graduation than several other graduates from several other universities in the UK. So that's one additional benefit of studying at Heritworth. As, as well as the various rankings we have, we are among the top 150 universities in the world for engineering. We are well known for our engineering courses, as well as our business, computing, finance, and several other courses as well. So here you can also see we have so many amazing rankings as well at our Dubai campus. So we've not based our rankings only in the UK. We also have our worldwide rankings and also rankings in the Middle East. So we are recognized and awarded as the best university in the Middle East by Forbes and also recognized as the largest and most successful university in the UAE as well. So of course, at the same time, students also have access to some of the best lecturers in their field. So I've had students at some point or um, prospects ask questions like, can I work as a lecturer while studying at Heritage? And it's interesting when I have to say, no, we only take lecturers who are already studying for a PhD at Heritage, and not lecturers actually, but just assistants to the lecturers. And that's because Heritage University takes time to make sure that the um, lecturers teaching our students are actually people who have a lot of experience in the industry, people who are well recognized in their field, just to make sure that you're learning from the best and the kind of skills you get when you graduate are top notch. You would later see how well employers value our graduates and how they're willing, of course, you've seen that already, they're willing to pay more for our graduates. And that's because of the kind of value our graduates bring. And that's thanks again, partly to the kind of lecturers that teach our graduates. And these lecturers are the same across all campuses. So even for students studying at other campuses like the Malaysia campus, as well as Dubai campus, you still benefit from these amazing lecturers. And nicely enough, uh, for most courses, even if you're based in Dubai campus, you would clearly have a few lectures done virtually that links you with the um, UK campus. So you would get to have like some joint lectures online to make you understand how your field works in a different continent and a different environment. So that's more like a good example would be like if you study mechanical engineering and you have lectures with the UK or Dubai campus, you get to understand how engineering works in the Middle East, how it works in UK and Europe, or how it works in other parts of Asia like Malaysia. So by the time you're graduating, you're kind of like a well-skilled um, graduate in your field. So also one very key thing, I've mentioned our career support earlier before, but what I didn't include was our employability rankings. We are currently ranked 95% um, for graduate employability, both for undergraduate students and postgraduate students. And of course we have several employer events we do on campus, and several graduate jobs as well we advertise to make sure our students are well placed. So one of the things that actually help us, because I can actually tell you right now that I have students who are still studying, who still have their dissertation to write in August or in May, depending on when they started. And they can already tell you, oh, Fiona, I have, I have a job. I know where I'm going to work when I graduate. And that's very much thanks to the career support and the value our students bring. So at the same time, like I mentioned before, we have like this graduate jobs to advertise on campus, both at the UK and Dubai campuses and Malaysia as well. So students can actually apply for these jobs earlier on, even before they graduate from school. And there are also skills workshops and employer events where students get to speak face to face with employers. And at times, many a times, students actually get jobs from these events. So they already know where they will end up before they graduate from school. Okay, and these are like some of the places our recent graduates from Africa precisely have gone on to work. You can clearly see some of these companies are based in the UAE as well. And um, some students have also chosen to go to other countries as well to work. And just to give you an overview of where our students have progressed to. And of course, feedback from employers. This is just a short feedback. You would find more on our website, especially when you're looking at why Heritage under the career section, you'd hear what other employers think about Heritage graduates and how they value and target Heritage graduates for employment. Okay, so I'm kind of like moving on to the courses that we offer. 
After that, I'll provide you with student testimonials. So clearly from here, you can see the courses we offer and several of these courses come with a work placement here, which actually gives you the opportunity to gain hands-on experience before you actually graduate. But in any case, even if your course doesn't come with a work placement opportunity, rest assured, you can actually apply for roles, part-time employment, and also full-time employment before and after you graduate. And so these are the list of courses offered across our campuses. I'll be jumping through this very quickly. If you have any questions about this, please feel free to contact me or ask them during the Q&A section. So um, I will be sharing a video now with a testimonial from the Dubai campus. Since we uh, launched our uh, campus in 2005, we've always been pioneering here. We were uh, actually the first university to set up in the Dubai International Academic City. We were the first international university to bring in and deliver engineering and design-based programs. And we were the first international university to set up in a purpose-built campus. So it's, it's, it's been really a, quite a huge success uh, for us. So we've got about 4,000 students uh, right now. Uh, over 80 undergraduate and postgraduate programs and we've graduated just under 15,000 students so far. We want our students to be future ready and that means that uh, the emphasis is not going to be only on the gaining and creation of knowledge but also on the development of the skills to use and apply this knowledge. So our new campus is uh, really it's all about empowering the students to, to develop those skills, to work together, to innovate, to solve problems, and of course to learn from each other and indeed to learn from the wider and global Harry Watt community. We've got some amazing facilities here on campus. So for the past year we've been practicing what we call responsive blended learning. So we've been supporting students to study on campus, and for students to study online, and for students to mix the, the two. And our new facility here really embeds the technology to, to do that in a, an order of magnitude better. So our classrooms have facilities, for example, um, AI controlled cameras, which will track the academics around the room, the ability to stream classes live to an audience outside. Um, we have some quite fun um, catch microphones that you can throw around the room so that students can ask questions, you can hold debates and all of this will be recorded if you, if you wish. Um, so we've got some amazing technology um, there. Um, we've got a, a variety of rooms on campus as well. So we do have some traditional looking lecture style theatres, um, but we also have uh, what, what we're particularly proud of, our pod rooms where students sit in small groups around their own computer and screen and they're great for group work, for interactive teaching and exercises. We've had some great reactions. Um, students really are wowed by the facilities we, we have and also they're, they're wowed by the opportunities to, to see friends and colleagues, teachers and other students again. It's going to be fantastic. It's exhilarating after all of this time at home, um, walking in here, you know, it, finally having that physical space for students and having dedicated student spaces on every floor and uh, world-class facilities. Uh, the first time I walked in, I just stepped through the entrance and all at once I just felt really energized and really excited to make use of this space. So I'm really looking forward to spending more time here and uh, hopefully the worst of the pandemic stays behind us in UAE and I'm looking forward to sharing the space with new and familiar faces. Okay, so I'm going to the next slide. Thank you. Great. Um, I would also be sharing the testimonial from the UK campus. I'm doing my master's here at Henry Watt. You can always speak to your lecturer. The professors are very welcoming. Everybody is ready to help you here. It's so good and I love it. <laughs> It's one thing to just come here and study, but then the support makes the whole experience really good. The lecturers, they're helping us out, so they're always ready to listen and they're always asking, do you need help? Because of the wonderful experience I've had so far, I would want to run a second MSc program, which I definitely will in January. 
overall facilities, I give it a solid 10. Coming from the engineering standpoint, I would say it's uh, top tier and state of the art. Most of the students that we have back home would love this kind of environment to study. The Orium, that is amazing because I'm into sports a lot. The gym is really good. The pitch is amazing. And I hear that some professional teams come to train there as well. The best thing about studying here in Hirwat is the community. It's just beautiful, the way people welcome you. It's just like you're in a family. It's a place where you get to meet people from very different nationalities. I've got to meet people from every continent and it's been a very wonderful experience. The international society as well, they're very active. They're always going to bring you in, so you're not going to feel isolated at all. It's very encouraging for someone like me who hasn't been in this setting before. They've made the whole process very easy for me. I will definitely recommend this university to other people from Africa. Okay, so I'll be going straight down to my next slide. And so entry requirements. Uh, so I didn't kind of like provide an exhaustive list of that. Um, but clearly the entry requirements for all students going in for undergraduate programs would clearly be a WIAC results or your KCSE results, um, usually WIAC results, A levels, AS levels, and IB one O and D precisely. And um, actually, interestingly, students can actually get into year one with a WIAC result. So students who have like two A's and three B's might be eligible depending on the subjects you get them in. So if you get them in relevant subjects, you will be eligible to go in for year one. Otherwise, you might choose to take your foundation program at either the Dubai campus or the UK campus and afterwards progress to year two or year one, depending again on your grades. Then um, at the same time for postgraduate students, we usually would take a second class upper or a 3.0 GPA or second class lower, depending on the course as well. And um, for English tests, um, clearly our campus in Dubai wouldn't require that from English speaking students. For the UK campus, we may require that if you studied or worked in a country or in a place where the medium of communication is not English. However, if you have been working in the last two years at a company where the medium of communication is English, and this is a company we can verify online with a website, and you're coming to the UK campus, then clearly a letter from your workplace would be sufficient for you to meet the English requirements. Otherwise, you can get a letter from the university where you studied at in the last two years. But if your WIAC result is within the last five years, then of course, you can provide that as a proof of English proficiency. Then of course, looking at the tuition fees, depending on the course, fees will range for the UK campus from around 16,000 pounds to 29,000 pounds. We will be offering scholarships for students going to school in January. And the scholarships will range just like it did earlier this year for September students. It would range from £1,500 to £3,000. Um, at the same time, we students have the opportunity to pay the fees in installments. So students can pay £4,000 at first to accept their offer. And the balance of their fees, you start paying that from a month after the start of lectures in six installments across six months. And of course, for the Dubai campus, um, we are currently offering uh, an 8,000 dirham tuition discount from now till next week, Monday. So if you wish to study at the Dubai campus, if you already have an offer, for instance, then just go ahead and pay at least 10% of your fees to get this discount. Otherwise, try and make an application as soon as possible and see if you can initiate a payment by Monday. Otherwise, the bicentennial award of 5,000 dirhams will remain. Um, throughout the whole of the month of June. And of course, there are various other awards students can get at the Dubai campus, like the Merit Awards, which is up to 100% of the fees for undergraduate students. Um, again, this 100% will be shared across the whole four years. So that means your first year fees divided by four, so shared across the whole period you'll be on campus. Otherwise, you can get a family bursary if you have a relative currently, like a brother or sister, currently studying at Herod Ward campus. You can also get up to 30% spot scholarship as well, spot discount at the Dubai campus. And of course, fees can be paid in three installments across four months. One interesting thing to highlight about the Dubai campus is the visa process, which I may not be talking extensively about now, but um, 
compared to the UK campus, students who choose to go to Dubai campus will not need to provide a bank statement for visa. That's just the extra thing you need to know. But of course, if you're going to the UK campus, clearly you need to provide a bank statement showing the balance of your fees and your living expenses of up to um, £9,200 has to be in your account for up to 28 days. Okay, so straight down to accommodation. So for the UK campus, we have like several accommodation options. Um, students can choose to stay on campus and on campus facilities, um, the fees are from around 147 pounds and above, depending on where you prefer to stay, or you could choose to stay off campus. You are likely to probably find more affordable accommodation off campus, but the issue is that these really get filled up quickly. However, on-campus accommodation is guaranteed for all international students coming to the UK campus. And of course, for Dubai students, there are so many off-campus accommodation options, um, ranging from around 15,000 dirhams and above for a year, depending on where you choose to live. And of course, the next intakes are the September. So there's still enough time for students to meet up with the September intake. And um, although, of course, there are issues with visa delays and all of those, but there's still sufficient time for students to meet up with this intake. And if you're sure that you have all your documents ready, that would include your bank statement and all ready by the first week in August, then you still have a chance to join the September intake. Otherwise, you can apply for the January intake at Herald Water University. So thank you so much for listening. I'll be happy to take any questions you have right now. Hi, Fiona. Thank you so much for the um, um, webinar. It was really interesting. At least I was able to learn that we have six installments now. That's something students will be very interested in hearing, that they are able to spread out their payments and they can switch from one campus to another. That's a very good selling point. And um, I'm going to use that very well. <laughs> okay, so we have questions here that students have been asking. So I'm going to ask them one after the other, then you can answer them. If you still have questions, everybody, you can still drop it in the chat box. If there's still time, we'll go to it. So the first question is, does the university accept HND and do they offer full scholarships to international students with outstanding performance? So yes, we offer, um, we accept HND students. So nicely enough, I'll just take advantage and announce that we have just started our pathway college and um, don't worry Chidima, you would hear about that within the next one week or two but um, since exactly. we're having this you're hearing mm -hmm. it a bit earlier so we started off on our pathway college and um, we are accepting students with HND so most likely wow. you would have to go through a two semester pre-masters then after the two semester pre-masters you progress to your master's program wow that's very nice and then for the full scholarship part no, we are not offering full scholarships at the UK campus and even at any other campus. Um, I know I mentioned the 100% scholarship for undergraduates. And if you listened well, you would hear that that's taken from their first year fees and shared across the other years. So if their first year fees was £10,000, it will be shared divided by four. So the first year they get £2,500 off the fees. The next year, the same two five. So it's pretty much shared across each year. So it's not a full scholarship. All right, thank you so much, Fiona. I would want to, I don't know if I'll ask or I'll just send you an email later. This um pathway, is it like okay. a direct application or it has to go through a pathway college? For this year, it's a direct application, but from January, it would have to go through Showlight. Oh, that's great. Thank you. So the next question, how can I get into medical school over there? So I think this question should be rephrased as, do you have any medical courses? Um, at the moment, we have like few medical courses. So if this question was asked by an undergraduate student, then I'll say the options you have would be courses like biological sciences, um, biomedical sciences for human health and psychology. So those are like the medical courses we have. And um, for postgraduate students, we have analytical science for the bioscience industry. And that's such a lucrative course because we only create, so students on this course need to have a background in like biochemistry or biomedical sciences or biology. And um, this kind of students can choose to progress to um, study, become like pharmacists or 
they can go into beverages and um, brewing and distilling. So those are like the options they would have. And nicely enough, this course was created because we have companies who actually asked her awards for graduates in that industry. So it's like a very big career opportunity and job opportunity for students on the course. But if you're looking at medicine and nursing, sorry, we don't have the Ahir World University. All right, thank you so much, Fiona. It's good to know that they can get a job immediately from a very reliable yeah. recruiter and um, agent, agency, rather, a company or firm. Okay, so we're going to the next question. How long does the student visa for students in Dubai last before a renewal is expected? So usually students renew every year um, for the students who are going in, but usually every year you don't need a bank statement. So it's basically send your passport to our visa support office. So Dubai students don't even need. So once um, SRUK, for instance, helps you with your application and you get through to the whole payment stage, what happens next is like the visa support team would contact you and support you with the visa process. So when you want to renew, you just go to the visa office on campus and give them your passports and it should be out within a few weeks. Oh, I agree. So I probably want to ask an SIG question there too. So are you saying the okay. Dubai um, visa team does the visa for the students or SIUK still do the visa like the normal UK one? No, the Dubai team does it. So once the student has paid, has an unconditional offer, they would mm -hmm. contact them around July and um, assist with the visa process. So all the student needs to do is provide all the documents necessary pay the visa fees, which would be provided to the students during when they want to pay in the payment plan. So, okay. the, visa, so the visa team just applies. The visa comes out within seven, to, seven working days to 15 working days, wow. depending on the type of visa. If the student applied for a fast track or a regular visa, then they just print the sleep and travel. All right. Thank you very much. So the next question here is, are there on-campus accommodations for postgraduate students with a child or family. So I think you just want to do across all campuses, all countries too. Mm, that's interesting. So there are on campus accommodations for postgraduate students, but the best accommodation you would find would be a studio apartment. And that's for UK campus though. So I'm not sure how many you'd be in the family and if you'd be comfortable with just staying in a studio apartment. So my personal advice would be to look for off-campus accommodation. And I would suggest you start applying now because most of the off-campus accommodations get filled up quickly. So if you start early, you'd get really affordable options from around 600 pounds for a flat and above. So start earlier on and I'll suggest off-campus really. All right, thank you so much, Fiona. So the next question is, I'm going to study a foundation year the, after the foundation year, will I directly get into undergraduate degree or will I have to apply again? So no, after a foundation year, you would automatically go in for an undergraduate degree. I'm guessing this student is going to Dubai campus most likely. So if you're going to Dubai campus, it's progressive. And what I'll just let you know. What I'll just let you know. Hi, can you mute your microphone? Sorry about that. Please? Don't worry, just continue. I'll mute them. Thank you. So basically, um, students who finish the foundation course, provided at least you score up to 50% in your exams, you would clearly progress. And if you do very well, you'd actually get an additional 5,000 dirham scholarships when you progress. That's for the Dubai campus. Yes. And of course, you can choose to progress to UK. You don't have to continue in Dubai if you don't want to, or you can progress to Malaysia. And for the UK campus, yes, after your foundation year, you progress to year two. Okay, that's that's really wonderful. And if a student goes on a foundation year, so that means they have to come back to do another visa or they can stay and reapply for another visa there in the UK. Okay, for UK, students joining this September may have to come back to apply for another visa and progress. But from next, from January, it will be one card, one visa. Okay, so that's like they have a card that will last them you have a visa that lasts them five years. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. That makes sense. All right. Next question. Does the university, I think you have had this HND. So I'm going to go to the next one. My problem is that I already made a 4K deposit, 
that was stated in my conditional offer. And when I uploaded my OL English language certificate and English language proficiency letter from my previous university and another from my employer, I was asked to write IELTS, which I'll be writing in July. My question okay. is, if I get the IELTS test in July, can I still be able to meet up with the September session or should I request for my admission to be deferred to January? Okay, great. So for this particular student, he's actually from a French speaking country. So obviously he had to write an IELTS because although his company was um, claimed to be English speaking, it wasn't verifiable. So which is why we want a company that has a website. So um, yes, if you have to write an IELTS, that's not a problem if you're writing in July. Um, I'm expecting that your results should be out within three weeks from when yeah. you write it. So that would most likely be maybe the first week in August or mid-August. So what I would really suggest is, why waiting for an IELTS result? Can you at the same time try to work on your bank statement? So the bank statement is getting matured at the same time you're getting your IELTS. Um, so basically, if you could have those together, you will clearly meet up with the intake. So that's option one. Otherwise, you can defer to January. That's fine. That's all right. And um, so we'll just move your fees and all of those to January. And you can start very earlier on with the visa process for January start. All right. Thank you so much, Shirina. I hope that he understands that. So we're going to go to the next question. So this person is asking, can I change the course I have been admitted to to a different course? Um, so, yes, you can. But why changing courses? I would have to ask, is it related to what you've studied before? So if it's related, of course, the admissions team has to look through and decide if it relates. If it does, of course, you can switch courses. And it's good you're doing that now before you pay and get a cast or, or get a visa. That becomes difficult. So it's a good thing you're doing that now. All right. Thank you so much, Fiona. So the next question, please, I need a payment advice because I've not been able to make payment due to the CDN trade system here in Nigeria for the past one month now. Does the university accept payment in Naira or have an account that can actually make payment into? Sorry about that. I'm going to mute that person. No worries. Um, right. So I, I this question... Get question or should I do this? Yes. Yes, I, I got the question. So she's having delays with her payment. Her payment hasn't been processed by Central Bank. Yeah, and everybody in Nigeria. <laughs> yes, like pretty much everyone in Nigeria who is paying yeah. through from A is going through this. So Miriam, the options I can give would be if you do have a Pounds account, then make a transfer to her what's account from your Pounds account. If you don't, and maybe you have a relative in the UK who can help, then please ask your relative to help with that to make it faster. However, we don't have a Naira account at the moment you can use. But what I could suggest, although I would allow Chidema in case she has other ideas to make her suggestions after I respond to this. So, but um, another option I would say is um, why waiting for CBN? Can you also try to work on your bank statement to make sure you have the balance of your fees, living expenses in the account for 28 days. So when the payment finally goes through, you would also have your bank statement available and you can, of course, move to cash stage very quickly. All right, thank you, Fiona. I think that that's just the best option because I've had students that are actually waiting about nine, 10 of them are in the bank waiting for CBM processing. So getting somebody in the UK is actually faster. Some of them are taking that queue and they're already asking their family members or friends that are already schooling in the UK. They send an error to them and then they're able to pay in pounds for them from the UK. So maybe later, yeah. since the person, is, if the person is a student, they can actually do the form A to send as feeding money to the person. Exactly. So it will still be processed for the person. So that's just the best way. Nigeria is really taking a lot of time. And if you really want to go in September, that's just the way to go. So I'm going to go for the next question. Good afternoon. I recently sent my English proficiency letter, but I haven't received any updates regarding my application status. I think this person would want to email you. Maybe you want okay. to email address or something. If this person has sent that, did you upload it to your application portal? 
if you did and you've not gotten a response, can you send me an email? I think my email is here. Um, you can just send me a quick email and please include your Heroworth student ID number so it's easy to track. Okay. So please send her an email and please include your ID number so it will be easy for her to track it and respond to you on time. Thank you very much. So the next question. I applied for the September intake. However, I am planning to start in January. Would it be possible to do that? Additionally, is there any difference between September and January intake? Okay, good question. So yes, you can actually defer to January, but I need to remind you that not all courses are available in January. We have yeah. some business courses available, engineering. Definitely you'll find something related to what you applied for before but um, not all courses. So I would say check the website to confirm. And um, if you've sent an email to the admissions team for that, then relax. They are not going to issue uh, a, an offer very quickly because they are currently working on September students. So you may need to wait till about September or October to get your new offer. But yes, you can defer. Then the difference between September and January would really depend on your course. Because for most courses, business, um, especially business engineering, and I think some of the IT courses, if you choose to study in September, in January, sorry, in September, first of all, it's a 12 month program. So it just takes you one year. And after the one year, of, except you're studying a course with a work placement, otherwise it just takes you one year and you graduate. But if you're going in January, for most of these um, departments I mentioned, the program may be for 16 months instead of 12 months. You're not paying additional fees. It's still the same fees, but it just means you have a longer summer holiday. So you have like three months to just um, enjoy. Should I say look for a job if you want to work full time? Because of course, if you're going to UK, you have the opportunity to work full time. But of course, if you are going to Dubai, it's still going to be one year. But if it's UK, it's going to be 16 months and you have more time to actually work or enjoy yourself before you graduate. Thank you so much, Lina. So I think the person will understand that now. Um, okay. This is still almost the same. The piece I was issued a conditional offer for September 22 and 3, which I accepted, but due to some things I wish to put in for January, do I have sent a mail for the farm? And so I'm, I'm thinking maybe the mail has already responded to. Okay, so I believe my answer kind of relates in the sense that you may not get the updated offer till around September or October, but no worries, as long as you sent it to the admissions team, they've seen it. Okay. All right, thank you. Yeah. So next question, I have a question about MOOC course. Must it be the exact one that was specified in the offer letter or just any programming course? Thank you. Okay. So um that's an interesting question. So MOOC, some students do have conditions with an MOOC and that's if the admissions team, especially for students going for IT related courses, so if they feel you don't have the required programming knowledge, they would ask you to write an MOOC. So usually, yes, I would advise you actually take the one specified there. So I'll give an instance. So if what was specified was Java programming, you can, uh, at times they put a link there for the Java programming course they want you to take. You should take that. Otherwise, if you're not able to take that particular one, just take another Java programming co um, course online or maybe at your local computer school. Just take something, the stated programming course. So if it's Python, either the one they sent you or another Python course. All right, thank you very much, Yuna. Sorry about that. So somebody's asking, what is the fee structure for international students? Okay, I think I mentioned that before. So you're yeah, expected to pay 4,000 pounds to accept your offer. Then the balance of your fees, you start paying that from a month after the start of lectures in six installments across six months. Um, that is for the precise um, UK campus. If you're going to Dubai, then you're expected to pay 10% of your fees to accept your offer then an additional 15% plus your visa fees around June or July, so like right now and next month, then um, you start paying the balance of your fees 
in three installments across six months. So it's almost the same installment plan, but this time around it's joint to, you pay every two, two months if you're going to Dubai. All right, thank you so much. So I'm going to go to the next question. Um, please, is there any January 2023 admission intake for graduate program? I would like to defer my September admission to January for MSc translation and interpretation. It's almost the same question. Mm, MSc translation and interpretation is only available in September. Oh, wow. Sorry yeah. about that. <laughs> Sorry about that. So you might have to defer to September 2023. Or just yeah. try to make it to September yeah. 2022. Yeah, yeah that's amazing. Yeah. Just put more effort. Even the fees, just try to ask somebody in the UK to pay. If it's bank statement, if you start counting now, you'll be able to make in for visa. So yeah. Just try. So, next question. It's been more than 10 years I left university. I'm currently self employed and have no employer to write a proficiency letter. Please, how can I settle the English language okay. requirement? So, uh, there'll be, I have two suggestions, Amarachi. The first one is going to be um, if your company, of course, it has a website and all, you can have someone at work, any of your colleagues, write that for you. Otherwise, you can have a client you've worked with before with their own letterhead, write, okay, I've done business with Amarachi and uh, I can do business with it, involves speaking and reading and writing in English, and um, I can confirm she speaks good English. So either yourself or any of your clients, you may have clients that are your friends who can actually help you write that as well. Um, thank you so much. So the next question, please, what is the deadline to meet conditional offer for September intake? That would depend on the campus you're going to. So if you're going to Dubai, um, why I would say try and meet all your conditions by the end of July. I understand that most students going to Dubai will be undergraduate students. So clearly most students going to Dubai will meet conditions all the way through August. And that's visible because visas are processed within seven working days. So you have sufficient time. So meet your conditions at the latest in August and pay your fees and you will get to school for Dubai. If you're going to UK, you understand you need to apply for a visa and that takes time. At the moment, classes are coming out quickly, but I cannot promise you that they'll be coming out so quickly when it's mid-August. We don't have any yeah. deadlines for classes at the moment, but um, I'll suggest that you're prepared for school by the end of July. So you can meet up with the visa process precisely because it's taking six weeks to get visas. Yeah. So end of July or first week in August. Uh, thank you. Can I just want to point out them? Um, your your email is not actually showing properly. There's this barcode on it. I don't know if it's something you put in by yourself. Uh oh, let me yeah. shift that. Can you see yeah. it now? Yes, that's better. Awesome. Uh, so thank you very much. Please, what qualifies one for a discount in their tuition fee? I was offered a conditional offer, and it was clearly stated that I do not qualify for a discount. Mm, so. Uh, this question, it depends. If you are coming from the UK campus, then what qualifies students? So what we did earlier in the year was we gave out early board discounts. So we asked students to pay the fees earlier on, and they did. And they got up to £3,000 off the tuition fee. Mm -hmm. However, the, it was mainly an early board discount because otherwise it's supposed to be only a merit award, which means only students with like a first class probably will be getting scholarships. So it made sense to make it open to everyone not just students with first class. So if you're going to UK campus, it's usually an early bird discount. That's when you get a discount. Um, aside from that, at times, some precise courses do have additional discounts. And those discounts are not really provided by Herald but they are provided by companies, should I say Herald partners, who are actually looking for very smart graduates or very smart students who they would likely employ after they graduate. So those are the options when you get discounts from here at what UK campus. For Dubai, there's an automatic discount of 5,000 dirhams right now, which is up to 8,000 dirhams for the whole of this week. And um, there are other scholarships like Merit Awards, the family discounts, and of course the sports scholarships. So these are all available to students who qualify for them, but at least everyone gets the bicentennial award if they can pay their fees this month. 
All right, thank you. So we, we don't have much time, so I'll have to be going through and pick out questions that you've not touched. That's so okay. this person is asking, what is the modalities between transferring from UK to Dubai? Is there anything special a student needs to do? Okay, um, all right. So I'll just try and answer that. Um, so if you're switching from UK to Dubai, I'll be assuming you are, uh, it depends on when you plan to switch. Do you have an offer? and you just have decided you now want to study in Dubai. If that's the case, very well. Um, talk to SI UK, they'll help you make an application to the Dubai campus and straight up you switch to Dubai. If you're already studying at the UK campus, so if your plan is spend some time studying in UK, then afterwards go to Dubai campus. If, if that's the plan, then you need to be an undergraduate student. So undergraduate students have the opportunity to maybe spend one, two years in UK, spend one year in Dubai or Dubai. So undergraduate students have more of that kind of option. If you're a postgraduate student, I would honestly tell you, you don't have enough time to switch from UK to Dubai because usually your cost is for one year. And if you're spending six months here and six months there, you wouldn't actually have enough time to even read. So it's better to be in one campus throughout your study time. Uh, thank you, Fiona. So, um, a summary of the question about the family. Somebody wants to know how do they defer exactly? So, how do they defer? Yeah. Send an email. So, if you're deferring, if you're a student going to the UK campus and you're trying to defer, um, you can either contact SIUK now or you can send an email to the admissions web email address. Um, I'm going to try to write that down or just in the meantime, send me an email. You have my email address here. So just send me an email for both UK and Dubai students. If you plan to defer, send me an email. But to give you a heads up, there's still sufficient time for you to meet up with the intake. Except you're having issues like financial constraints. Otherwise, you have sufficient time to meet up with September intake for all campuses. So you can just try and meet up with this intake instead of deferring. Okay, Joseph is asking from Liberia. My office is willing to pay all the fee at once. Do I still need an um, update on my financial, about my account financial? Um, I'm, I think um, that's in our bank statement. Also. Bank statement, I guess. Mm -hmm. So actually, from my end, I'd say, if you are paying full fees, and this goes to everyone, if you're paying full fees, you still need to provide a bank statement. But what would be in your bank statement would just be your living expenses. So living expenses is about £9,207. So keep that there for 28 days and provide that for your CAS and for your visa. But if, you're, if you have a funding body, so now these are for students getting scholarships like PTDF, GNPC, um, NDDC, those kind of scholarships that are covering both your tuition and um, living expenses. For those ones, these are like recognized funding bodies. So a letter from them just saying, oh, we are funding this student would be sufficient. In that case, you don't need a bank statement. All right. Thank you, Fiona. So we would have to stop here at this point. So anybody that has any question, you can always email Fiona or you can email me. I'm dropping in my email address here. So you can always send Thank me you. an email. So we take it up from there. This session was really interactive and interesting. I, I've, I've learned one or two things and I'm sure everybody else has learned something. So thank you so much, Fiona. Thank you, everybody. So my, my email address is there. Fiona is on the, on the screen. So you can send yes. us an email and we'll just take it up from there. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks so much, Chidima. And guys, SIUK is one of our trusted educational partners with several locations across Africa. And um, so please feel free to contact Chidima. She'll be able to support you with your application. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Deepika, do you have anything to say? No, just wanted to thank Fiona and Chidi, you both, for your valuable time today and making this seminar look more knowledgeable and presentable. Yeah. Thank All right. You. Thank, thank you, everybody. Thank you for joining. Bye.